Friends, the gospel, the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. Triumph all ye cherubim, sing with us ye seraphim, heaven and earth resound the hymn, Salve, Salve, Salve Regina, Salve Regina, oh, oh, Salve Regina. I can't remember if it was the late 1980s or in the 90s. A great movie came out called Sister Act. And it was very interesting to the, who's seen Sister Act? A few people. It's an interesting movie because it's about several things. So it's about a mother superior who has been excellent in her job, but she's feeling kind of obsolete. She's tired of doing the same things. But it's also about a young woman played by Whoopi Goldberg who gets witness protection in this convent in San Francisco. So, so she has to kind of sort of hide away as a nun, as, as a source of protection. But one of the wonderful things that, that happens by virtue of, of these two women knowing each other is that they both grow. And so for those of us who have seen the movie, what happened? So Sister Mary Thomas, who's a lounge singer, she's in this convent, and she has to wear this habit, and, and the habit's itching her, and she doesn't know what to do, and, and she keeps making all the, the crazy mistakes and the mother superior is just getting more and more frustrated with her. So finally she says, well, you're a loud singer, so I'm going to entrust you with our choir, who's terrible. The choir was terrible. And there was an older sister who had directed that choir for years and years and years, and it just didn't get any better. It wasn't liturgy. It was just singing. And so Sister Mary Thomas, she goes in and she directs the choir, and, and the sisters first sing, and it's terrible because they're not listening to each other. Now, I don't know about you, but you can't really sing in a choir, and a choir cannot sound good if we don't listen to each other. Isn't that a truism just also like about life sometimes? If, we, if life is to sound good and to be effective, we have to listen to each other. Because if, because if we don't, there's no ability to have harmony, true harmony. And so what happens is Sister Mary Thomas works with this group, and then after a while... They perform Hail Holy Queen at Mass. And everybody is just kind of checked out. All oh, the sisters are going to sing another terrible song. But the song sounds really good. And, and the Mother Superior looks up and she's like, oh, wow, well, Sister Mary Thomas is doing something good. And so she sits back after they finish this beautiful rendition of Hail Holy Queen, thinking that it's over. And then all of a sudden, another rendition comes to it and all of a sudden, everybody in the church who's looking at their missalettes or reading the bulletin or whatever, all of a sudden, they're looking up, they're paying attention, and they're engaged in a new way. And not only that, the music's so loud and so engaging that even people outside of the church who haven't been to church in ages are wondering about what's come, going on. And they come in, and then slowly the community begins to grow. What is so great about a story like this is that Our Lady... Yes. Our Lady's yes was something that kept growing. When the angel first came to her, she had no idea what was happening. But she kept saying yes, yes, yes. And as she said yes, she struggled through things that were inside her comfort zone and outside of her comfort zone. But she kept saying yes. And because of her yes, the Lord brought her into heaven, body and soul. Not just soul, but body. And so now Our Lady is in a place where we, who are like her, can ask her for what we need. When we feel tired or dejected or confused, we can ask Our Lady for what we need, knowing that she is now in a position to be able to pray for us and to support us. There's a wonderful theological principle called grace building on nature or grace perfecting our nature. It's a wonderful principle. It basically means that God working with us and on us can do great things in us, whether we want or open to them or not. But there's another aspect of that. 
If our nature is receptive to God's grace, God can even do greater things. I don't know if you were listening to that gospel reading, but then when Mary finally says, what did she say? My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. And does she spend all the time talking about herself? No. She talks about what God does. Healing nations. Healing people. Seeing the lowly. Raising those people up. God's love and God's friendship in our life is something that changes us so that you and I can have the courage to go out into the world and not force our agenda, but hopefully go into our world and to share God's loving agenda. God's agenda is not like our agenda. Our agenda always is conditional. I don't care. I think human beings, we have moments of unconditional love, but it's impossible for our love to always be unconditional. God's love always is. And that's why the reception of God's grace in our life is such an important thing. It helps us to untie the parts and aspects of our life that get in the way of being able to receive God's healing, to receive God's blessing and God's peace. Sometimes in our life, we could have done, we've done things and we've done missteps that we don't forgive ourselves for, but God's grace in our life helps us to find the healing to forgive ourselves. Because when we can forgive ourselves, what can we do? We can love. If we cannot forgive ourselves, we cannot love. So as we go through this Mass on this great feast of the Assumption of Our Lady, let us ask through her, through her intercession of Our Lady on Tire of Mass to help us to turn to our God and to never be afraid to expose anything that is troubling us, that we're carrying us, that we're letting go of, to the mercy and peace of God. God's mercy and peace frees us. And when it does, we can sing. Triumph all ye cherubim, sing with us ye cherubim. Heaven and earth resound the hymn. Salve, salve, salve Regina, salve Regina, oh, oh, salve Regina. Our Lady, untire of knots, pray for us. Amen.